Let's quickly want to mention and talk about the controversy regarding the Grammy Awards and the album of the year specifically, because some people, majority, it has to be, we have to kind of, you know, let it be known. It's mostly Beyonce fans. So the Beehive on social media is really kicking up a fuss and letting it known that they are not happy that Beyonce did not win album of the year at the Grammys 2023. But to be fair, to be fair, having looked at the list of, you know, nominees for album of the year, you got ABBA, you got Adele, Bad Bunny, Beyonce, Brandy, Carly, Coldplay, Harry Styles, Kendra Lamar, Lizzo, and Mary J. Blige. There's not really a lot of great music to choose from. A lot of these albums I hadn't listened to. ABBA, for instance, The Voyage was completely forgettable. I don't even know how that made it into a list. Maybe that's just like a... Um, it's just like a nomination that you make for just being a legend or maybe for having a lot of kind of good faith and whatnot and a lot of kind of good memories tied to some of your older hits. But that ABBA album was really, really bad. Adele 30, for me, all Adele songs sound the same. And if I was really going to go for choose one person who I thought maybe deserved album of the year when you think about cultural impact, when you think about um, artistry, when you think about repay value, or so replay value is a good, good measurement, especially if you're going to categorize or trying to, you know, award people for album of the year, like in a calendar year, I think Reaper Valley is a good one. And I think one album that I kind of go back to again and again is Bad, Bad Bunny on Verano Senti. I think for me, that should have been album of the year. But of course, you know, with it being a Latin trap album, whatever, reggaeton is never going to win it, especially the fact that, you know, it's not even, you know, he's not even singing in English for goodness sake, he never does. So that's never going to happen anytime soon. But maybe that deserved even more so over Beyonce Renaissance. Because as much as I enjoyed Renaissance, as much as I thought it did kind of spur a really interesting kind of house type revival within the quote unquote black hip hop urban R and B kind of, you know, uh environment, I still think overall it was quite forgettable. And if anything, a good sign of how forgettable Beyonce Renaissance was was how weak I thought the remixes were. There was a couple of remixes here and there. I think Kachinada may have had one. Or maybe played one, sorry, he shared a clip of himself playing one. But I didn't see a lot of really standout um, remixes. If anything, the actual album cuts are better than the remixes. So far, there's not been many remixes that have really kind of, you know, turned the tide. Maybe people think, oh no, this album's flipping amazing. So it's a little bit of disappointment. So the only thing I would say with Harry Styles is that similar to flipping, you know, Taylor Swift, the issue that he has is that he does make some bops. There are some good tunes here and there from the stuff that he puts together. But unfortunately, with the nature of the music that he makes and who he appeals to, with it being normies, you can't really push the envelope too far and you have to kind of to stay in some some sort of pocket even if it is a pocket of your own design it's still a pocket that people can know you for so for the most part that usually i would imagine equates to being very safe and that's what you feel with you know harry styles music it feels very very safe and for me you know looking at an album of the year I wouldn't say they all need to be kind of avant-garde pushing the envelope type of stuff, but you need to have a little bit of repay value. It can't be too safe and in the pocket either. You need to be able to push the envelope slightly. So that's your only criticism I have with it. But, you know, it's not really enough to kind of kick up a fuss and make a campaign and say the Grammys is cancelled because Beyonce didn't win. Um, it just kind of is what it is, nature of the beast. And also, who knows what even the criteria is judging what the album of the year is at the Grammys. What is the criteria? Is it the quality of music? Um, and who is judging this quality? Because, you know, you imagine a lot of them probably don't have the greatest taste if they were able to pick flipping Mac Lamar over Kendrick Lamar that year. So clearly there's an issue there, but I didn't really think it's that big of a problem to people to kind of kick up a fuss about Harry Styles winning it, in my humble opinion. Then we move on to some of the best and worst moments of the 2023 Grammy. This is courtesy of New York Times Magazine, which I thought was very interesting to kind of pull from. Number one, of course, they mentioned the best opening salvo, Bad Bunny. I legitimately did think that was one of the best kind of openings they would have done for the Grammy, especially when you consider how joyful and boppy Bad Bunny's um, music is for the most part. He performed amazing as we know him too. If you've seen clips of him on tour doing arenas and whatnot and playing in clubs and just being an absolute lad, you would see that his live shows have kind of gone from strength to strength to strength. I think even there was a moment actually last year, maybe I think when Kanye was going on all these rants and going all over the place and talking to anyone, I put a camera in his face. I remember him mentioning something along the lines of like, him and his friends or people he's in the studios with when they're 
play, putting music together, they always have somebody they're kind of aiming to sort of surpass. And one person they wanted to kind of, you know, have on a list of someone they're looking to kind of emulate and do better than was flipping, uh, what's his name, Bad Bunny? Because of how much effort and money he puts into his shows, how good of a live performer he is. Um, I think he just works amazingly. So that was pretty cool to see him do his bits and bobs and also small little bits about iconography or just you know messaging the fact that he was performing up there wearing a pair of like light blue jeans a white t-shirt and a flipping backwards cap right pure americana but you know done through the lens of somebody from puerto rico right through like a latino guy right i do like that kind of vibe i thought that was really good like kind of t- tying in his kind of origin story and his actual culture by having people from you know i thought well i don't know what they were dancing but flamenco type dancers that were on the stage also i thought that was a quite a nice little tie-in that was going on there on the show overall so i really did enjoy that the other one is said here best acceptance was kim petrus moving speech about trans ex- trans existence um kim petrus and what's his, what's his name sam smith won an award for the song called unholy i guess that's the one everyone's getting you know pissed off about but what i discovered from this acceptance was that kim petrus was trans and i had no idea so that was very enlightening to find out in real time but overall i didn't really think much of the tune didn't really think much of the performance i didn't necessarily care um the hip-hop tribute here um which is the top 50 hip-hop tribute i didn't like in the slightest i thought it was horrible it looked like they didn't practice there was no choreography no one was on beat people looked like they were screaming and shouting the best thing about that was maybe you know Louis Vert coming out and doing his I just want to rap flipping dance right his little skank that was pretty cool but overall it was largely forgettable very boring no very cringe so not boring very cringe and embarrassing and I don't ever want to see that ever again um, worst free part worst free Pete sorry was Trevor Noah um, I thought all these comedy host guys did pretty bad Gerald Carmichael did pretty horrible at the Golden Globes I thought wasn't funny at all in the slightest he was going through some existential crisis in terms of figuring out if he should have done the awards in the first place and he kind of you know put that nervous energy and up tightness into the show and how he presented it and hosted it and it kind of didn't really help or work and Trevor Noah just in general I just think isn't that funny and isn't that great of a host so it just was never going to work so I wasn't that interested about that uh, Beyonce being smile, smiling and coming late everyone was getting annoyed about that and how Trevor Noah did, you know introduced her who cares another one which I thought was hilarious was this bit, which is um, featured on New York Times Magazine, feature of it. It says, worst participation trophy was a useless fan segment <laughs> where they essentially, it felt it felt like anyway, maybe it's not true, but it felt like the Grammys hired paid actors or people who, you know, said they were super fans, weren't actually super fans, got around the table and started talking about how much they loved so-and-so a person for album of the year. And I thought it was horrible because if anything, the Grammys is quite stuffy and quite rigid in what they do and clearly i think the grammys isn't necessarily made for like a gen z um millennial type audience anyway it's men i would assume it's mostly made for boomers and for whatever reason they were probably stuck between a rock and a hard place where they're waiting to tap into a little bit, especially fan culture, especially when it comes to Twitter and whatnot and the discourse around the Grammys. They're waiting to tap into it in some way. So they got these people around the panel discussions to talk about, um, you know, the Grammys and the nomination of people that they liked and whatnot. And it just didn't work because it just came across false and fake and not something that was real. Um, the next one here says, best tribute that should have never been necessary was Quaver remembering takeoff. This, of course, was beautiful. It really did bring a tear to most people's eyes seeing Quavo on stage performing such a touching and real tribute to take off I really did enjoy I think most of us have seen the video of him performing the same song looking very gaunt looking very sad looking very sullen as he kind of you know just hears the song maybe play for the first time actually and finally cut but I thought that song was really done really well the only issue with this was the whole kerfuffle around this um you know it kind of led to Offset having a back and forth with Jay Prince then stories are coming out now of Quavo and allegedly um, Offset getting into altercation behind the stage or backstage because um, Offset wanted to come on stage and perform or be there when Quaver was doing his tribute to take off and Quaver didn't want that or something along those kind of lines and they're going to some sort of tussle. I don't necessarily have an issue with it personally. 
I, you know, maybe if it's because it's family and regarding what's happening, I do understand maybe, you know, especially trying to bury the hatchet publicly, it would have been nice for them to kind of go on stage and do that. But if they haven't done the work off stage to really heal whatever rift they have going on for whatever reason it is, getting on stage and pretending and faking the fuck in the name of honoring someone's legacy doesn't necessarily sit right with me either. So I can understand both sides of the of the story in that regards. But obviously the sad thing for Offset is it now it's opened a whole another kind of worms regarding, you know, the Prince family and J you know, J Prince and J Prince Jr. and all these kind of people coming out and essentially, you know, attacking Offset, basically saying he wasn't really down with the family, no one likes him. He's trying to clout chase off the back of this like it's pretty troubling so that was a new about horrible thing to see off the back of that touching touching tribute i thought beyonce's appreciation of, of sorry lizzo's appreciation of beyonce was very well done also even though it's a tad cringe she did pretty well and of course the other ones we don't necessarily care about but overall um grammys were decent for what they were i still think they don't do good enough in terms of trying to tap into the conversation around it on social media they tend to do it very they tend to be kind of you know a little bit laissez-faire with it not necessarily caring too much but i do think if they were able to tap into that better maybe make it a little bit more of a loose show not so stuffy and remove some of the extraness it could definitely definitely impact culture on a far bigger scale but i'm sure you know from the sponsorships they get in anyway just sitting here they probably don't necessarily need to hear need to hear my advice when it comes to those things i don't think they 